Once upon a time, in California, a little pig was born on a farm. But it's just a first step for this mini piglet, destined to become a pet. A very different lifestyle from its cousins in Laos, who roam free like the first domesticated hogs. How have pigs' natural instincts survived millennia of domestication? In the French countryside, this sow is her master's ally, thanks to her powerful snout, which can sniff out truffles. Back in the United States, in the state of Georgia, wild pigs are wreaking havoc among the native wildlife. On the other side of the ocean, on an island in the Bahamas, they've developed rather unusual survival skills. Five pigs, five destinations, to do away with preconceived notions and discover these sociable animals who communicate with each other and with us, capable of being wild and violent, but also gentle and intelligent. Our story begins in the Western United States. This Californian farm, 100 kilometers from Los Angeles, breeds domestic animals as well as pets. And in particular, these mini pigs, which the people of LA are absolutely wild about. These sows are three months pregnant. They will soon give birth. Adult mini pigs stand 30 centimeters tall and weigh 50 kilos. That's five times less than a farmyard pig. No wonder some people have the strange idea of keeping them as pets. Do you want your belly rubbed, huh? Good girl. <laughs> The sow communicates with the breeder by grunting. Good girl. What healthy babies. Yes, I can feel them moving in there. Oh, I'm sorry, I stopped rubbing. I know. Depending on their pitch, these vocalizations convey contentedness or irritation. During the tricky reproductive phase, the breeder keeps the sows in a special pen. This turkey keeps an eye out for potential intruders. But the dogs protect them from another menace. This Kune Kune sow who devours everything in her path. This greedy pig doesn't stop at goose eggs, but also tries, despite the fence, to steal the sow's food. <coughs> So the dogs keep her away from the pen. Like wolves hunting their prey in the wild, they keep order on the farm, where, for a peaceful life, everyone has to behave. Protected, the gestating sows stay safe in their pen.
three weeks later, the long-awaited moment arrives. Nineteen piglets are born on the farm. The two litters are already mingling. Close since gestation, the sows raise their young together like their wild cousins, boars, who live in groups known as sounders. The piglets are squealing because they're hungry. Their mothers offer them their udders at the same time. This synchronized feeding is not a coincidence, but a way of ensuring a mother does not feed her neighbor's young by mistake. The fight for access to milk is constant. The strongest, like this black piglet, choose the best teats. Marked with its scent, the piglet recognizes its teat at every feed. Near its mother's head, this one provides more milk, so the piglet will grow faster than its siblings. But other less resourceful piglets roam from teat to teat. Still hungry, this piglet tries its luck outside mealtimes. It ignores the visible teat because it's empty of milk and bravely searches for another. But its mother turns a deaf ear. Her rest is far more important than the piglet's satisfaction. has produced more milk. As the days go by, the fight for dominance becomes a struggle for survival. The black and white piglet is very weak. The sow checks it's still alive. It's almost three times smaller than the other piglets in the same litter. It struggles to find an available teat. When the mother says the meal is over, it's over. By insisting like its pink brother, it runs the greatest risk for a piglet, being crushed. This time, they narrowly escape their mother's hefty frame. But this isn't true of all piglets. Victims of crushing, attacks, or undernourishment, this breeder loses up to 20% of each litter. So she watches over the weakest and tries to curb the instincts of the strongest by keeping them safe indoors. There you go. Good babies. There you are. These future family pets have to learn to live with people. But will they become tame? We'll know in a few months' time. In fact, how were the very first pigs domesticated? On the other side of the world, in Laos, they live in a similar way to their ancestors. 
In this village in Savanakhet province, they enjoy a free-range existence. It's an inexpensive method of farming, as the pigs also forage for food themselves. These two-week-old piglets are free to roam. By playing, this striped piglet gains the upper hand over the litter. It establishes a hierarchy thanks to body language. With its snout, it pushes a submissive piglet towards its mother. The young aren't shut up because they never stray far from their mother who spends her nights in a pen. The sow's owner serves her breakfast. This morning ritual strengthens her sense of attachment. She recalls that this is where she is fed. Her very opportunistic offspring take advantage of their mum's meal to feed themselves by nudging her teats with their heads to get the milk flowing. This semi-domesticated sow spends most of her time eating. As soon as she's gobbled up her swill, she sets off in search of more food and the litter follows close behind. Except for him, he wants to finish his mom's food. But not for long. Driven by instinct, he runs off to join the others. Despite the obstacles, he tracks his mother's scent. He tries to, but he loses it. Too many different scents and sounds. In a panic, the piglet races around the farm without ever straying more than 100 meters from the pen. His mum hasn't gone far, though. She's on the edge of the village, feeding on grass. Pigs graze like boars living in the forest. From infancy, plant matter is part of their balanced diet. The striped piglet is still on the lookout for his family. He locates them at last by ear. They're looking for scraps now. Like garbage men on their daily rounds, they clean up the village. Well before the invention of agriculture, wild boar also entered human settlements to feed on garbage and excrement. This is how the pig's ancestors domesticated themselves 30,000 years ago, just like the dog. Dogs are carnivores, whereas pigs are omnivores like us. They eat everything. That's why they like to live in villages, 
cocoons with readily available food for their offspring. This sow feeds 12 piglets thanks to her six pairs of teats. Some breeds have as many as 10 pairs, while wild boars only have five. This is because man has selected those animals capable of rearing the largest litters. But their extreme fertility poses a problem when they're let loose in the wild. as is the case on this American island. The forest rangers are forced to cull the wild pigs in these marshlands off America's east coast. Because Osabor's natural preserve has limited resources, the vegetation which grows in this salty soil is poor in nutrients. Competition for food is fierce between local wildlife and the intruders in this ecosystem. Several thousand strange looking pigs live in a 100 kilometer square area. They're descended from swine released by Spanish explorers in the 16th century. This hardy two-month-old piglet is already independent. Unlike his direct competitor, the fawn. This one is skinny, its visible rib cage a sign of its weakness. They both eat the same fruits of the forest. But the piglet's remarkable sense of smell gives him an advantage. And its long snout digs the ground to reach roots and insects. With less access to food, this fawn is wasting away. It will not reach puberty. The pig's metabolism can evolve, turning these ordinarily pudgy animals into wiry creatures able to survive the lack of food. The piglet's mother weaned it early in order to return to the sounder. As a group, it's easier to face the dangers of the forest. Among these dangers is the alligator. This predator hunts by ambushing and stalking. Alligators feed on marine birds and fish, which they hunt in groups. They even venture onto dry land in search of mammals. but the pigs are on their guard. This pig runs off to warn the other members of the sounder. Alligators seldom catch wild pigs. So they have no natural predator on the island. They aren't satisfied with eating the deer's food. These hoof prints prove the pigs have been on the trail of a treasure buried in the sand. Eggs. 
very tempting for an omnivore. Those of loggerhead sea turtles. The pigs didn't get hold of these turtles, but of the 22,000 hatchlings born here this year, only five to 20 will return as adults to this beach. These fragile creatures have a very low reproductive rate. Culling the invaders is the price to pay for the survival of this threatened species. In this natural reserve, the rangers have strict orders to shoot any wild pig in their sights. Two thousand five hundred pigs are killed on Osebor every year. Their bodies are left to decompose and provide food for turkey vultures. The piglet is still alive. He's joined by a traveling companion. It's hard to imagine that these small creatures disturb the ecosystem. But their remarkable survivability makes them one of the most harmful species in the United States. This does not stop some Americans treating these little devils like angels. At Christmas time, California looks like something out of a fairy tale. And the mini pig farm is no exception. Three months after their birth, they've become perfect pet pigs. The breeder dolls them up to attract potential adopters. The smallest of the litter behaved during the photo shoot. Good girl. <coughs> they squeal with fright when they're picked up because in the wild, only predators lift them off the ground. But they're not all as cooperative. Look, I have food right here for you. It's okay. It's okay. The dominant little black pig is not a docile model. <laughs> its grunts convey its anxiety. I'm behind the tree. Once the photos are taken, the breeder's blog displays the little prankster's face at last. This is how she sells her animals. Bought on the internet thanks to its pretty photo, the little black piglet is taken home by its new owner. Young mini pigs are sold weaned, but leaving a familiar environment is still a shock. His new owner has named him Remington.
shut in the living room, Remington discovers his new home. He uses his snout to explore. Far better than his sight, his sense of smell helps him to familiarize himself with his surroundings. In a house that has not yet been made safe for the newcomer, there are all sorts of strange things. His fear gradually fades. A bond is slowly formed. A sociable animal, Remington loves contact. Taming process is off to a good start. But this human is not the house's only occupant. <coughs> Ever curious, Remington <coughs> takes advantage of his owner's absence and this door left open by mistake to venture into the garden. The German Shepherd wants to play, but the piglet's natural instincts tell him to avoid this potential predator. Like its wild cousin, this pig runs fast and can reach speeds of 45 kilometers per hour. He opts for one of the best survival strategies, running away. But Remington doesn't know this subdivision yet. He's unaware of the dangers. Predators are lurking in the hills. In California, coyotes have spread to urban areas. They wait for nightfall to hunt unguarded pets. It's evening and the piglet still hasn't been found by its owner. Remington is going to spend the night outside. Luckily, the coyotes didn't get hold of Remington, who's now busy indulging in his favorite pastime. The lawn's owners probably don't appreciate his voracious appetite. Neighborhood word of mouth works. And Remington is reunited with his owner. The thrill of independence is over. In Laos, it's another story. The doors of freedom are opened for the piglets first thing in the morning. After their swill, these four-month-old youngsters rush off to explore. Being omnivorous makes you curious. Pigs never stop nosing around. 
greedy as ever, they search for anything they can possibly eat. They go looking for something to round off their meal in the dry paddy fields. Pigs constantly adapt to their environment, and this improves their cognitive abilities. In fact, their brains are larger in comparison to those of herbivores, who always eat the same type of food. In the paddy field, the piglets spot a muddy puddle and wallow to their heart's content. Not to get themselves dirty, but to protect their skin from the sun's harmful rays. They're ready to continue their search for food and now show how ingenious they are at finding proteins. Crabs live in these ditches. The pigs of Laos literally binge on them. Their powerful jaws crush the crab's shells. This incessant foraging for food also improves pigs' memories. They have excellent spatial intelligence. For instance, they can find their way home at the end of the day. But that isn't all. They also have a memory for time. These piglets know exactly when supper time is. If their owner forgets, they squeal to remind him. The Laotians use a special call to attract their pigs, too. The animals recognize their master's voice. They also learn how to behave differently towards different people. These bananas aren't for them, but they know the grandmother has a soft spot for them. And they're right. She gives them the rice left over from lunch. <laughs> Over time, they form a close bond with people. In fact, for the Laotians, these rather rough taps on the neck are a sign of affection. Pigs enjoy contact with us and with each other. They spontaneously groom members of the group they like. But this peaceful existence is short-lived. This piglet is now fat enough to leave home. For the villagers, it's like a savings account or a piggy bank. Its sale at market will bring in fresh money. And that's the origin of domestication, raising animals for food or as professional assistants, as is the case in France too.
In the shadow of Marais sur Belle Castle in the Perigord, a vault is home to a sow called Chippy, who is only allowed out to accomplish her mission. Bon, eh bien alors, si Madame veut bien se donner la peine. Every afternoon in winter, her master goes with her to clients. The owners of chalky terrain planted with oaks or hazelnut trees. Chippy, Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh. A few centimeters below the surface grows a fungus worth its weight in gold. It's invisible to the naked eye, but Chippy can locate it from a distance. Her vital weapon is her snout. A point of contact with the world, it has more nerve endings than any other part of her body. Like all pigs, Chippy roots the ground instinctively. But her master chose her when she was small because she especially enjoys hunting for truffles. Oh, elle est jolie celle-là. Chippy, allez, allez, cherche, allez, cherche, allez, 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 allez. He spent the past year teaching allez. her to walk straight along these avenues to check the foot of every tree. Allez, tu vas te dépêcher un peu. Non, mais... Despite Chippy's training, whenever she finds a truffle, she's tempted to eat it. But her owner is attentive. He pushes her away with a cavadou. Yalla. Yalla. This traditional tool does not hurt her snout. In exchange, the sow gets a reward. Because unlike a dog, she would never give up her truffle to please her master. As she's always hungry, she happily works all day. A dog would get bored sooner. Although she weighs a bulky 200 kilos, Chippy is her master's best friend. To her snout's tough cartilage, Chippy can even dig the ground in winter when it's cold and hard. Which is good because black truffles are ripe in December and January. And to let everyone know, they produce a perfect copy of the pheromone released by male boars during mating season. The fungus has co-evolved with pigs, so they can distribute its spores. And this is why all truffle pigs are females. They dig up what they think is a rutting boar. The sow sometimes damages a few truffles. But she still finds 1,300 grams of truffles in just two hours. A remarkable performance. Pig's ability to adapt is in their DNA. For instance, the Bahamas' crystal clear waters are home to manta rays, nurse sharks, and some surprising swimmers. But the pigs in this idyllic bay are not as well off as they appear. 20 or so live on Big Major K. They were left here to serve as a food supply during the Cold War. They reproduced, adapted and stayed. But there isn't much to eat on this Caribbean beach. 
This pink sow and her offspring spend their days looking for earthworms and shellfish to stave off hunger. Oddly enough, this spotted sow does not bother to. She seems to be scanning the horizon, waiting for something. She runs off now to meet a boat. She even starts swimming out to it. what she came to get. Another follows her, the pink sow. Like their cousins in Laos, they have a good memory and know that visitors come here every day at the same time to see them. It makes for an unusual photo. But for these pigs, it's a question of survival. Well-meaning tourists flock here in boats chartered by tour operators, and the entire sounder rushes out to greet them. It's both their fortune and their misfortune. These animals are now dependent on humans for food. These swims resemble a graceful underwater ballet. But this charming scene is deceptive. There's a downside to the swimming pig's popularity. They have a herd-like mentality. Constantly aware of each other, and above all, their place in the pecking order. Pink Sow knows she has to hang back, but she tries to approach. She is rebuffed. She returns to the beach where the weakest are waiting. The piglets can't swim yet, they're afraid of water. They're cute and have more chance of being fed if they allow themselves to be picked up for a photo. These pigs have become a cash machine for the tour operators. But there's a total lack of understanding between the amused visitors and the starving pigs. If you get too close to the animals, you might end up annoying them. This lack of privacy leads to conflicts. The strongest turn these to their advantage. People's fascination with these pigs 
actually impacts negatively on them. When the tension dies down, they still have to remain vigilant. Prisoners on the island, they must brave the elements and especially the sun. For the spotted sow and the others, even lying down is a codified activity. Their hairless snouts are the most delicate part of their bodies. They cover them with sand to protect them from the sun. Pigs sleep 12 hours a day, usually in the shade to protect themselves from the sun's rays. Forced to spend long hours on the beach waiting for the next boatload of tourists, the pigs get sunburn, which sometimes degenerates into skin cancer. Pig lovers do not always have their well-being in mind. That's the sad reality of this island paradise. Back in California, the pig adopted a year ago still behaves like other members of its species. Remington's exploratory instinct means he will never be an ordinary pet. Pigs constantly use their snouts to find food. This food dispensing ball keeps Remington occupied while his owner is out. But it's no guarantee she'll find her house in order. Remington has reached adult size. He's no longer scared of the German Shepherd and quite simply ignores it. While one sees the ball as a toy without understanding its real purpose, the other only regards it as a source of food. because Remington will do anything for food, even dance. Sit. Sit. His owner teaches him this trick by using positive reinforcement. When he succeeds, she rewards him with a treat and a good stroke. But this desire to learn has its limits. The pig isn't willing to do everything. On short walks in front of the house, the question is, who is walking who? These vocalizations convey his frustration. Remington wants to eat, not walk. Unlike the dog, he does not try to please his owner, but will be equally stubborn his entire life, about 15 years on average. His owner will just have to deal with his temperament. Close to people for millennia, the pig is a versatile and intelligent creature. Originally forest dwellers, 
Pigs can adapt to very different environments, but only turn into pets when what pleases us pleases them. <laughs>